let's look at this set. Ajay wanted to conduct a test for students from six sections. A, B, C, D, E, and F. He prepared four questions, one through four, and created six tests, one for each section. Using these four questions, okay. So there are six sections. Uh, the sections be A, B, C, D, E, and F. He prepared four questions, one, two, three, and four and created six tests, one for each section. For each of these sections, he created a test using these four questions. He ensured that each of the six tests had an equal number of questions. So let's say each test had N questions. Each test had N questions. So the total number of questions that end up getting used up is six N. No two tests had the same. Uh, he ensured that each of the six tests had equal number of questions and no two tests had the same set of questions. Some questions out of these four get assigned to each of these six sections and no two, no two tests have the same set of questions. Now out of four, out of four, you have to select. Out of four, you have to select, let's say, X questions, 4CX, such that it becomes a multiple of six, such that it becomes a multiple of six. 4C0 gives me one. 4C1 gives me 4, 4C2 gives me 6, 4C3 gives me 4, and 4C4 gives me 1. So the only way it can happen is if each of these sections had a test comprising exactly two questions. Exactly two questions. So how can that be? Question 1 and 2 being paired up, 1 and 3 being paired up, 1 and 4 being paired up, 2 and 3 being paired up, 2 and 4 being paired up, and 3 and 4 being paired up. Okay. This is known to us. It is also known that the test for section B and test for section D have question 3 in common. So you have question 3 here and you have question 3 here. This is known. Okay. The test for section A and the test for section E have question 4 in common. You have question 4 here. And you have question four here. Okay. The test for section F and for section B do not have question four. Test for section F, four isn't present. Test for section B, four isn't present. Okay. This is known. The test for section C does not have question four. This also does not have question four, but has question two. Two is present. While test for section A does not have question two. Does not have question two. And this is the entirety of information available. Now, look at this. Four is supposed to come in three pairs. One of those pairs is with A. The other pair is with B. Now, out of B, C, D, and F, out of B, C, D, and F, one more question four pairing has to come. That pairing cannot be with B, that pairing cannot be with C, that pairing cannot be with F, which is to say that pairing has to necessarily come here. 3 and 4, this pairing is with D. This is uniquely known. Next, A has a pairing with 4. The 4, 3 pairing is already used up, it is with B. 4, 2 pairing cannot be used up because 2 is not with A. So this can only be 4, 1. So this is with A. This is also uniquely known. Next, the only other pair of 4 is 2 and 4. Because 4, 1 and 3, 4 are allocated, this here has to be 4, 2. This is with E. This is uniquely known. And that is the extent to which we can solve it with absolute, to absolute certainty. Now, for B, now, if I'm trying to make comprehensive list of cases, for B, can you see, you cannot have 4. 3 and 4 is not possible, but 3, 1 is possible. 3, 1 is possible. And 3, 2 is possible. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4, 2. We have got this. We have got two subcases from this. Now, now, I've got 
three at two places. I've got one at two places. I've got two at two places. Okay. So this tells me, okay, uh, uh, one, one other thing. I've got, uh, okay, for the first subcase, there can be more cases created. I don't know. But for the second subcase, can you see 2, 2, 2? All the three cases of 2, 2, 2 have been identified. So 3, 2 pairing is here. 2, 1 pairing can only come here. And now the only pairing left is 1, 3. It will be with F. This gives me an exhaustive list of set of questions that can be created for the second subcase. But for the first one, now with C, I cannot have 4. I can have 3 and I can have 1. Both are possible. I can have 3 and I can have 1. So I go ahead and create 2, 1 and 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 1, 3, 4, 4, 2. And finally, what is left here? 1 is left and 2 is left. And here, 2 is left and 3 is left. And this is it. This is the exhaustive number of cases that can be created. For A, E and D, we know precisely what set of questions are there with them. For A, D and E. For B, we have two possibilities. For C, we have two possibilities. For F, we have three distinct possibilities. Let's get to individual questions. The test for which of the following pairs of sections will definitely have at least one question question in common a and b you have one common here but in the second case see one two three four all four questions are unique so this pair not necessary because of the second case we have created how about b and c in the first case you have question three common in the second case you have question two common in the third case you have question one common so yes regardless of what case you take b and c will always have at least one question in common how about c and d Again, in the second and the third case, one, two, three, four, all four questions are distinct. So this cannot be the answer. E and F. In the second case, one, two, three, and four, all four questions are distinct. This cannot be the answer. The answer has to be option B. Next question. The test for section E will necessarily have. For E, we were certain it had to be the pair of two and four. So question one, question two. Question two will necessarily be present in test E or section E, which of the following statements is sufficient to determine the questions in each of the six tests? Option A, the test for section B has question one. But then this leads me to two possible cases. This is not sufficient. Test for section F has question three. Two cases, one, three and two, three, both are possible. This is not sufficient. The test for section D has question three. It is valid in all three cases. So this is not sufficient. The test for section C has question three. This is only possible in the first case. So this is enough to determine the questions in each of the six tests. Option D is the answer. Last question. Which of the following questions is not present in test for section D, but is present in the test for section A? It has to be question one. Question one is present in... Section A, but not present in section D. So answer is option A, question one. And that is the entirety of this set. This set has elements of case building and also a little bit of PNC involved. So fun set. Mm -hmm.